Hey, remember a couple weeks ago I made that clear acrylic guitar with like the sliding pickup on it? Uh, I still got that idea stuck in my craw and so um, I'm at it again. This time is the bass. I didn't go crazy with the camera filming this one because it was all basically the same process as the last one, but I filmed a couple minutes so we could kind of talk about some key parts. But more importantly, just looking at the end result kind of explains it all. Like almost everything I make these days, my project starts in Vectric software where I design it. And even if I'm not cutting it on the CNC or laser, I still design stuff in Vectric often and even print it out on paper or whatever. Um, but so here you can see I took my Astola guitar design and modified it to become a bass. But the one big difference from the guitar I made is that now I've made this big recess in the center of it um, that is going to house my sliding mechanism. And that is exactly the same thickness as a piece of hollow core door. Go figure, because hollow core doors are the new palette. So then the next step, of course, is to go to my CNC. I cut the body out on my Avid CNC, and then I cut the hollow core door parts out on my Thunder Laser. And here you can see that now the closet door parts are basically like a normal pickguard, and with that recessed piece down, it's all sort of the same depths and heights and proportions as a normal instrument. And then I also have this thumb rest idea I'm working on. But now I have to clean all the CNC chatter marks up. I'm still learning the best way to cut acrylic on the CNC and, uh, and sand it, but I didn't want to go crazy like I did last time. Do you want to have some fun? I don't know if you do or not, but we're going to have some fun anyway. So check this out. In case you don't know this, of course, this acrylic I'm using is not new. It's reclaimed. I would never buy a new acrylic to make guitars. It just kind of goes against what I do. But there was a local television network that took apart its set and they had this big, beautiful acrylic desktop I got my hands on and I'm almost out of it. But since this acrylic is reclaimed, uh, there isn't, um, you know, there's some scratches in it. There's, there's some stuff I had to peel off that makes me scratch it. It gets some chatter marks in the CNC. Uh, it's a pain in the neck to polish it up to a mirror shine again. And uh, I don't want to do that. Last time I got pretty close, but it still wasn't perfect. So this time we're going to try something a little different called um, vapor polishing. We're going to see what happens. So what I did is I did experiment with this once before and I had some kind of cool results. I'm hoping that this will be even cooler. I sanded this to about 320 grit, uh, which is still very far from clear and polished, as you can see. Now what we're going to do is I have this galvanized steel tub that I've lined with magnets and paper towel. And inside it, I'm going to put this wooden box. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to soak all this paper towel with acetone, which will melt plastic like this when it comes into contact with it. But in theory, what I'll do is I'll put this body in once I've done all that and not touch the paper towel. I'll cap it again with this Aluma board so it's not plastic in the mix um, and then let it sit overnight. And then we'll see what it looks like. Acetone gets absorbed through the skin, so I'm going to grab some uh, rubber gloves. Definitely feels like I'm doing something illegal. And I put a couple screws in the top of this wooden box just to minimize contact with the plastic. Throw a couple more magnets in here. I want to keep this paper towel straight and not touching the instrument. It is not making contact with any of the paper towel or the acetone or anything besides those four screws in there. And see what happens in the morning. It's the next day. Let's see what it looks like. Whew! Still smells. Doesn't look too, too much different. It's got this really kind of cool frosty thing happening and it feels, it feels neat. The left is before the vapor bath and the right is after without doing anything else to the finish. And then here you can see when I wiped it down and kind of gave it a little polish, it came a little bit clearer, but still has that cloudy look. Using my homemade mineral oil and beeswax polish, I also waxed all of these pieces, partly just because, you know, to put some finish on them and also to help them slip a little bit. And then I had to glue on my thumb rest and make my pickup and adhere that to the sliding base plate. So I made a pickup 
basically like the last one that I made for the other clear guitar uh, with the same scuba diver motif. And uh, here you can see I got it all tested out and started to put it together. Uh, everything was working good. I was really, really happy with it. And then I noticed that the pickup needed to shift up this way a little bit. So I was going to take it off and just sort of file down the ends and I popped it open. <laughs> so I'm going to have to unsolder this and uh, I don't think I can get this back together without totally taking it apart and rewinding it. What a bummer. I decided to make another one completely and I used all wood instead of the clear acrylic top so I could glue it together with wood glue which is a little more sturdy and I think I like the look of that better as well. And then here I did that just quick little basic polish and we got our final result. But now we know what it looks like, let's have a listen. Obviously, I didn't invent this idea. A lot of people have done it. I've had a few ideas in my head over the years about being very complex. But then, then I got into the idea of just keeping it very simple, which is, um, you know, still what I'm doing here. This is all real simple stuff. And it's also uh, a lot of people noticed and mentioned the Gibson Grabber famously had a base pickup that moved a little bit. But the problem with that one is it was mounted on another piece. So it just didn't have a huge travel area because they're trying to cover this cavity and making it unsightly. But I think if you can make like the cavity look natural, um, then you don't have to cover it and you can really get this full range of motion. Helps with the acrylic, that makes it simpler. I'm real happy with the slip to stick ratio on this, um, right out of the gate. So, you know, one of the things that people were commenting on was how it should have some kind of mechanism or like a latching system. And some of my earlier ideas were involving springs and screws and all this stuff, but it just doesn't need it. Like, as you can see, the pickup is easy to move by hand, but it doesn't move while you're playing. It's not going anywhere, but then you want to move it, you just move it. So it doesn't have to be this big complicated thing like I thought it was going to have to be and like everybody else had probably thought it had to be too. I said in the last video that I think this is kind of a little bit gimmicky and two pickups is still better than one. But on this particular instrument, maybe because it's a bass, I think we're getting closer to it being one pickup is better than two. Uh, I'm really digging the simplicity of this and the ease of moving and uh, the thumb rest built in is really kind of nice. I do want to make a wooden version of this and I want to make a guitar version of this. And I think for the guitar version, instead of putting a thumb rest, I would put a finger rest down here for people that like to kind of grab something and, and twiddle about, put the lever on the bottom uh, and see how that works and see how it works on wood with the slip stick ratio because with acrylic and closet doors, it's freaking perfect. Here's where I might say this stuff about like like sharing and subscribing or, you know, joining me on Patreon to get some more behind the scenes stuff. Or I might say something about how I'll probably do another one of these. I'm not sure when. I've got some other ideas for sliding pickups, but I can actually tell you right now that I do know when I'm going to do another sliding pickup. And it's next week. It's almost done. It was supposed to be done for this week. It's a little bit different, a little bit less practical, believe it or not. <laughs> But uh, so stay tuned for that. And as far as that wooden guitar one, that I'm not sure when I'll do or if I'll make a video of it. I probably won't make a video of the process because we've kind of done that to death, but maybe I'll just put together something showing the end result, which is basically all I did here. So if you do like this sort of stuff, you can go over to Patreon and support me there and get a little bit more behind the scenes information. Uh, you can also just go back and watch all my other videos. Most of them are a little more about the building, a little less about the talking. So I hope you enjoyed this either way. Uh, I know I love this base. It is not for sale yet. It will be for sale in July. Oh yeah, that art show thing, there's a link. Oh. All right, thanks a lot and be good.